Okay, so today we have uh, a presentation, like I said, on a nat natural language processing uh, method uh, in a corpus analysis of central Kurdish definite, uh, definiteness marker. And the presenter today will be uh, Hiwa Satpur, who is an uh, associate researcher at the Department of English and American Studies at the Goethe University of Frankfurt, and also a postdoctoral fellow researcher at the Department of Languages and Information Sciences at the University of Tokyo in Japan. Um, his uh, recent activities lie on machine learning and natural language processing with a special focus on low resource and lesser known languages of Western Asia. And he's going to present work that's uh, a collaboration with uh, Arash Amani, who is an independent researcher uh, interested in machine learning and natural language processing tasks. He is working under the supervision of uh, Hiwa Satpur with a focusing on uh, processing Kurdish corpora, both colloquial and in written forms. Um, so Hiwa, I will stop my share and then you can take over. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. There we go. Thank you, Manu. Um, and hello, everybody. Welcome uh, for this talk. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, I share my screen first to make sure that everything is all right. Um, yeah, so I, I assume that you see my screen right now. Yes, this um, is good. Okay, great. So um, yeah, uh, my name is Hiwa Sapur. I'm an associate researcher at Goethe University of Frankfurt. Um, I studied empirical linguistics, empirical and comparative linguistics at Goethe University Frankfurt. And I was also visiting researcher at Cambridge University for a while. Um, my main focus uh, lies on uh, morphosyntactic um, variation like word order variation in different languages, uh, specifically in Western Asia. Uh, today ta today's talk would be on one of these uh, minority languages, uh, which I'm going to introduce also in my talk. Uh, the objective is um, I'm going to show you how I extract and uh, study the uh, corpus of a colloquial speech and uh, how I use NLP um, methods for um, using the corpora of colloquial speech, basically. Uh, during my speech, please feel free to ask your questions. Um, just simply speak up. Uh, if you have any questions, so it is totally fine with me. Uh, and the roadmap for today's presentation would be that I'm going to, uh, first of all, to introduce you the, to the region, the language, different linguistic features, uh, especially with respect to definiteness marking. And after that, I will show you some of the uh, results by using uh, regex uh, method uh, in which I could um, basically analyze the corpus data for definiteness marking. So uh, I start by going to the next slide. Yeah, uh, regex solution for low resource languages, low resource. Basically the languages that I'm working on are low resource in the sense that there is a very low a number of corpora and majority of them are endangered or in the process of strict um, um, basically uh, transition to change uh, by losing different patterns. And my topic today will be focusing on definiteness. Um, first, the sample region and the languages. So where our departure point would be Western Asia. Uh, I'm not sure I'm, if you are familiar with the region, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Turkey, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. As you see in this map, uh, basically, this is the area that I'm focusing on. More specifically, um, I'm going to highlight this area. As you see, there is a highlighted area, which is quite um, basically uh, obvious from the region, and that is called as Kurdistan. It is not an official region, but of course, a majority of speakers are Kurds dwelling with other um, basically cultures and languages like uh, Aramaic speakers, Armenian, uh, Azeri Turks, Turk, Turks, Turkmens and Arabs, as well as Persians, uh, Greeks and a couple of more uh, nationalities in the region. In the next slide here, uh, I'm showing exactly the distribution of Kurdish varieties. So Kurdish is belonging to Indo-European uh, language family, and it is also belonging to Indo-Iranian. Um, the uh, red areas, as we see here, far to the Anatolia, like to the west of Anatolia and Syria and Iraq, 
to the southern areas of Iran, as well as some areas in the northern areas of Iran to the Caspian Sea, some spots on the northeast part of Iran, close to the borders of Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. So there are a majority of the Kurds dwelling in this region. Uh, different types of colors, as you see here, uh, basically this is not exactly a map for the student distinguishing the linguistic boundaries of Kurdish varieties, but these are pointing out to different Kurdish varieties. So it is um, basically Kurdish is very um, problematic in the sense of defining it what it is exactly in terms of linguistic definition and um, with respect to uh, analyzing the language variety as there 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 is no agreement in the in various ways so these are different varieties some are calling them as language some are calling them as dialects some as accents so but the topic is not today about uh, what is dialect language and accent rather i'm pointing out as a whole globe globally that this area is called Kurdish, mainly pointing out to identity and, and basically sociolinguistic point of view. So this is the region. Uh, and if I want to be more precise, uh, I'm tra traveling with you to the Iran uh, and specifically to the northwest uh, part of Iran, the uh, gray um, dark area and uh, zoomed out here, zoom in here uh, called as Azerbaijan at Arbi. So this area um, is a multilingual area where uh, different language varieties such as Kurdish, um, yeah, Kurdish with two varieties of Northeastern Kurdish, uh, also known as Kromanji, Mukri Kurdish, um, as well as New Aramaic with two representatives of a Jewish dialect and Christian, which are um, totally distinctive from each other, Turkic Azeri from Turkic family and Armenian as an Indo-European. So as we see, we have Indo-Iranian, Semitic, Turkic, and Indo-European, and all of these languages are in contact for centuries. So um, like I could say some, I would say thousands of years, but I would say centuries. Uh, um, that they are in contact. So this is one important feature here to be pointed out in terms of contact. And uh, the, all of these languages are also under the superstratum of Persian as the official language of Iran. So basically there are two layers of different types of contact in which they are in contact with each other. And there are a lot of interreligious intermarriages between them running. And they are also under the contact with um, Persian as the lingua franca as, and the education and media language of the country of Iran. Um, more specifically, uh, I'm inviting you to the southern part of um, the province. Uh, here it is called Mukriyan, and this region is purely mostly um, nowadays are um, like dominantly um, covered by the Kurdish dwellers. Of course, in these areas, uh, in the east areas, there are also a majority of Turks, um, but uh, the Armenians and uh, Aramaic speakers migrated from the region, still some left, but very randomly. So this is the area actually the, that I'm going to talk about today and the language variety of this region. Mo more than 1 million people are speaking and the language of course is not official and written. It is mostly colloquial. Uh, the type of data that I'm uh, uh, going to talk about is um, that I analyze in my um, basically uh, study include monologue narrative free speech and conversational data and uh, the data I collected during my field works um, during my bachelor as well as master up to today, even after my PhD. I, I went to different villages, so all of these areas and these cities' names, as well as villages, I went personally there, I collected the data, recorded the, the, uh, v, the videos and audio recordings from the people, and I interviewed them uh, also by questionnaires. I also have done extra um, data collection by crowdsourcing and doing sp experimental data by explicitly asking people about uh, unusual patterns and unusual structures. So I wanted to combine both uh, elicited and non-elicited type of data together. Um, Kurdish is also known as an OV left, um, language variety, left branching. So this is also peculiar about this language variety to see that if it is really OV or VO, it is not the type of discussion here, but uh, in the literature, it is considered to be OV. 
As I said, the topic of today is definite marking. By definite marking, I'm referring to definite article the and indefinite article a and, and of course demonstratives uh, this, that, these, those. This, uh, these are the cases of English for um, basically uh, analogy. And in central Kurdish, which is also known as Sorani, but uh, the variety that I'm talking about is called Mukri. In the literature, it's considered to be um, uh, like to have morphological markings such as aka, which is equivalent to the in terms of form, an indefinite article like ek or ak, um, which is equivalent to an. So this is the uh, type of form which is uh, introduced in the literature. Um, and I added also a couple of other variants uh, because depending on the type of um, article, like the, the person who is writing about uh, Kurdish. So there is like Kurdish standard written form for the academic writing and um, the IPA form. So both are possible forms that people are using. Also for the indefinite marker. The last two ones, yek and yek are the equivalent for one, but still they are used for indefinite because uh, because, uh, because sometimes due to the um, vowel assimilation, it might be uh, possible that um, the people they consider both as um, ek or ak. Below, I'm also um, uh, giving you an example of how the, um, in basically this language variety uh, sounds, for example, amnish and nanwayekman habu homda ber kirt. So as for me, we had a bakery, I put myself under the bakery. These abbreviations are not important here, it is just abbreviation for verb, V, T, target, like here, target is referring to recipient, P, P, also two different types of prepositions, so this language variety can be flagged or marked by adposition and oblique case, and of course the subject. Uh, so what looks like the definite article here in this example, as we see in the orange box, here we have indefinite marker for um, a bakery. So we see that the English version is a bakery and we have indefinite marker exactly um, uh, uh, hosted by the noun and uh, also um, bounded by ecletic. So basically it is not like English as a free morpheme, uh, but it is like a kind of suffix here. And the definite article, as we see that this is the IPA form, which is written similar to the indefinite one, it is also attaching to the, to the uh, elements basically here, uh, bakery, the bakery. So we see aka is uh, within the, uh, the word. I also give you another example of an indefinite, for example, uh, that he goes to somewhere, uh, here uh, we see that the place, um, it's considered to be somewhere translated, but again, the indefinite marker is as a suffix and it is between different elements within a word. Um, here, I want to point out that we will see that how difficult it could be for different types of NLP stuff if we are going to do like for uh, corpus and detection of definite marking, it would be super challenging and complicated in the sense that how to find out uh, these type of words that it could be also similar to many other uh, kinds of uh, elements which are not really definite or indefinite. Uh, so what we see here in this slide, um, I pointed out that this in central Kurdish, um, generally definite and indefinite articles are uh, considered to be aka or ek. Um, but in my study, I found out, no, it is not the case. So here I want to point out to really empirical linguists that can go and di deep dive into the data and the corpora and to find out more features and forms. So what we see here at the bottom of the slide, we have definite, indefinite, bear, and one, uh, and uh, in different uh, personal number, singular, plural, as we see here, we can have a definite marker such as a, which we don't have it here. We can have a ka in parentheses, depending on the word and depending on the suffix could be uh, hosted by uh, the element and the vowel before it could be different. So either the first one or the second one could be dropped. And we have the plural form and the plural form like um, a can. 
in the indefinite form, we have two forms, as it is also stated in the literature. But interestingly, the indefinite marker also can be plural. So uh, just imagine like a man. In Kurdish, it could be a man plus plural, like a man. So like a bunch of people, a bunch of men, um, which um, who are indefinite. Uh, and uh, I, for example, I as a speaker, I have no clue about them, but I imagine a group of people. Um, there is also bare form. So in contrary to English, for example, in this language variety, um, a, a noun can be without any definite marker, and it could be also plural. And also one, as yek and niek, uh, is also can, like attested in my corpus of data. So as we see, in, depending on what kind of approach do you have, if you are a computer scientist, a programmer, and if you just follow the um, traditional uh, grammars or the literature about the language, then you may face with such a kind of um, forms and then you may result um, in different uh, types of patterns. And if you be a linguist with the knowledge of the language as well, so then we will have totally different and even more complicated patterns and forms in the language variety. In the next slide, I'm going to show you again another example here, since I introduce also the um, plural definite marker, etc. Uh, again, I'm pointing out an example from Mukri Kurdish. We have a subject and the subject is a one uh, object uh, book indefinite. So we have, we see that here now the indefinite has nothing afterwards. In the previous example, we had a clitic afterwards. Here, the definite marker, the indefinite marker um, um, basically uh, um, uh, is the last um, part and element of the noun. And um, of course, um, if we look at here, we have the clitic, which is um, by the equal sign. That means that the indefinite still follows by a clitic. And then we have da as a verb, a preposition, and then the target, which is a recipient here, and we have definite marker. So again, there here, another challenging point that we will have in programming that I will show you the statistics later and to see that, because you will see that how the statistical analysis really uh, like uh, the regex um, calculation really perform well or not, because as we see that we have similarity between a definite marker with indefinite marker in both and this is very interesting because it is super difficult and for um, uh, for programmers and also for the machine to realize this which one is definite which one is indefinite so these are some challenging points and then uh, another example would be in the case with only a so as we see here in this example he said the boy fell down in front of me the boy uh, has a definite marker a, uh, and we see that it is totally different from ak or aka, and it's it is only an a. Uh. Um, this is again another challenging point in the corpus analysis of uh, my data because this is peculiar to the colloquial speech. Basically, rarely I saw that in the um, written forms. But um, if we consider this as a kind of culprit that we are going to analyze for speech processing or for different mobile purposes, I don't know, predictive text, et cetera, then that would be very difficult to realize this um, if it is a definite marker or because it can be also a demonstrative marker and plenty of other more. Uh, for now, I just want to show you the uh, form. This was an introduction to different forms of definite marker, but I'm going to show you the pos another possibility of this language variety. And what do we have here? We have a combination of uh, demonstratives and definite markers. So for example, here, there is a demonstrative in which the noun is within the demonstrative. So that man, it is just the same here in Kurdish, but what we have, instead of having two free morphemes, we have um, the, def the demonstrative, then the noun, and the other parts of the demonstrative, which is criticized to the uh, noun. And um, as we see that, again, this act could be tricky because it could be also realized by the machine as a definite marker. Then the next step is we have, again, demonstrative with an oblique case, and uh, we have a demonstrative with a definite marker and then an a. Here, the difficult part would be either a k is the definite marker or k is definite marker and 
au and a is the demonstrative, uh, or ac is the definite marker, and the last a is the, clitica, the cliticized form of the demonstrative. So depending on how you analyze the language, you may um, find out different results. And beside that, we can have demonstrative with definite article. We can have also a combination of all of those with an oblique case. And at the end of the day, the demonstrative can be also um, together uh, marking, uh, together with an indefinite marker, marking a noun. So, uh, that man, that a man. So this is another unusual uh, feature in this language variety that you can have the monosortives together with indefinite. So you see that these are the type of forms that as, um, as a computer engineer or as a computational linguist, you should be aware of the, la the language you are working on because generally these type of patterns that I'm showing you are not mentioned in the literature due to many reasons. If uh, you can ask me later on if you have interest about this reason. At least based on my experience, I can point out. Now, let me show you a corpus sample of the time, like a corpus sample that I analyze for this study and the type of work that I have, like the type of corpora, corpora that I have. Here on the left side, we have references. This reference points out to one sentence. Um, and in the middle, um, this is the original Kurdish example. And on the right side, we have the English translation. Um, the written form, the script is a Kurdish a Roman alphabet um, because Kurdish has Roman alphabet and also Aramaic Kurdo alphabet. Uh, here I'm pointing out only to uh, the Roman alphabet, and the other one is also another possibility for having corpora and analyzing the data, but it would be just a similar pattern with different scripts. What I want to show you here in this script, how I detected, for example, different types of um, markers, morphological markers, and how the machine dealt with that. Uh, to start from top, we see the yellow ones, which are pointing out to um, demonstratives. Uh, here again, I point, uh, I pointed like I highlighted the demonstrative as uh, gray, but the nominal, uh, the, the nominal element as yellow. I would see that the machine should go through all of this and to find out and it detect these patterns and forms. The uh, red one is the indefinite one, as we see on the translation part, uh, the equivalent. Again, the indefinite uh, is as a suffix, and after the indefinite, also another suffix is attached to the to the word. And here, the green ones are those bare forms without any definite or indefinite marking. As I told you, this language variety has this possibility to have nouns without any kind of marking. Indefinite, indefinite, indefinite. And um, finally, um, the, um, the monocities and green. So this is the type of language variety that um, uh, I analyzed on the corpora. Uh, and what I found out for, from the corpus analysis using a regex tool, uh, I'm going to uh, show you how um, machine tools can be really useful in helping you find out about different types of forms in the language of variety, even if you are um, studying the language of variety deeply and you are well aware about that, there are still spaces you may uh, skip or overlook and you may not notice, but the machine, if you really define the rules pretty uh, robust, then you get very good results. For the regex, what we did, um, we did uh, an extraction process in which we have the sentences, as I showed you, the corpora is available, then the sentences are clear, all transcribed, translated, and in some cases are uh, annotated. Then we tried to extract patterns based on the, uh, in the first step, we tried with the um, patterns from the literature, and then we evaluated our results with what we, with what with the percentages of accuracy percentages that we received, then we changed it and then we did the filter exceptions. For the filter exceptions, what we did for, in some cases, we really were not able to use regex because it was super difficult. So we had to define a kind of a free words dictionary so that we can really limitize what we are searching for to filterize, okay, hey, machine, we don't, we don't want, for example, these type of words or these type of forms. And at the end of the day, we found, we got the sentences with those patterns that we were expecting. Let me show you some frequency um, uh, scales from uh, the corpus analysis. So uh, the corpora in which included from like 10, 11, 
persons for the sample uh, analysis, including like demonstrators with the highest, then indefinite with from the as a, as as the second um, option, uh, more frequent in the corpora and definite uh, and uh, at the last. Interestingly, there are a lot of linguistic analysis that we can do on these basis, like on the basis of these frequencies. Just as an example, that even though that this language variety has definite marker, it has less tendency to use definite marker except for, for example, um, like if we compare, compare it to English, which you must really, in most of the cases, use definite marker, and this language variety is not necessary, instead the monasteries are used more. Um, and among the different forms, as we see, we have a higher rate of ACA form, and um, the F form is still high, and those were really super complicated in finding out those patterns with regex. So we had to do it manually at the end of the day. And then the, the plural uh, definite forms also has the lowest. Um, for different types of forms that appeared after the uh, definite marking, we have various types of features. So as you see that the machine really can help to find out different types of forms uh, that you are uh, basically searching for while it is super hard for finding out manually. And the indefinite forms also, so, yeah, the egg and egg are just the phonetically different. Otherwise they are just similar. And the yik and one form, basically, it is the lowest one. And uh, for the monasteries, uh, the, the type of the monastery which um, bound, like which circumflate, like um, like as a kind of circum circum and circum affix is um, bounding the noun was the highest um, than the rest with respect, for example, the plural form. Uh, so in this slide, what do we have? We have um, almost uh, 10 different types of text from 10 different people. Uh, again, we have different types of variation among each. I don't want to talk about gender and age differences, etc. But what I'm going to talk is uh, here to highlight is we have a higher number of um, definite marker appearance um, than less with respect to a, and then uh, the plural form of definite marking. And uh, with respect to indefinite, again, uh, 10 people with 10 texts, we have the ek ak forms are the highest and the one form the lowest. Uh, there are a lot of different types of linguistic interpretations. Feel free to ask me, then I can tell you about those cases. But uh, the results of regex information shows very interesting and cool uh, analysis. For example, if we start from the right top definite marking, we see that we have um, uh, the, the true label and the predictable label as 98 and 75. 75 uh, points are to those that are wrong. So we really didn't expect to be um, here, like we wanted to have the as less possible of this type. And we have uh, almost 98 uh, cases which are predicted uh, precisely. So we are happy about 98. And then we have 10 cases which we found out, okay, these 10 cases we overlooked and we uh, didn't notice what are these cases. So the machine helped us to go through all of the data and to find out, okay, the, what are these 10 cases so that we can train the data and we can, um, we can train the code and then to have a better result and the rest this yellow bar is like the yellow highlight is those cases which are not important to us at all for finding out. But if we compare the indefinite finding of the regex um, uh, exploration in comparison to definite, it seems that the machine works pretty well with indefinite. So it seems that almost 108 patterns and forms are um, correctly detected, 12 uh, wrongly, and 11 cases are those problem problematic ones, and 2,530 are those cases that we which are not important. So, um, but what are important uh, patterns here then to point out that we say that uh, with respect to all of these uh, three forms of definite, indefinite, and demonstratives, uh, we expect like to have 91%, 94% of prediction correctly with high accuracy. But in reality, in the real life, by uh, um, in the recall part, we see that the indefiniteness um, is pretty robust and quite good. So the, our regex form works pretty well. The indefinite 63%, and the demonstratives almost 
almost 97%, which is really great. The fact is with about the definite marker, again, I'm coming back to those cases uh, of A uh, here, as we see, it is super difficult for the regex to find out. At this step that we have a really low amount of uh, data, we need to use, for example, more complex methods like machine learning, neural network um, methods to have a better predictability rate. However, due to lack of corpora and corpus analysis, it is super difficult to find out data to train the machine and to get uh, better results. Um, that was uh, what I could offer um, as the result of corp 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 corpus um, analysis. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Great, thank you very much uh, for this presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if people have uh, questions. I don't see anything in the chat yet, but please write your questions in the chat. I know some people are having problems with audio as well. I, mean, I, have, a, I have a few questions, um, sure. but I don't want to take up all the time. Um, so, so I was wondering uh, right at the beginning already, so you collected the speech. And then yeah. um, you, so did you then tra transcribe the data or did people transcribe the data or how did, how did that, okay, and is there in a standard kind of consistent way of writing things? So uh, um, what I have done, I collected the free speech data and then I transcribed it myself. So basically I went through a, a lot of laborious works and then I had to, for example, to transcribe the data. But then there are various methods of transcribing, for example, uh, the, 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 the type of the script, because Kurdish has a Roman script, which is um, pub like publicly used in different uh, places. I tried to um, transcribe all of those data with the uh, Kurdish Roman alphabet and then translate the data even and to annotate them. Uh, of course, I got help later on from the native speakers as well to check the consistency and to check the validity of the transcription uh, so that it could be used. But there are problems with respect to different types of scripts because there is no standard written language. And so we have a lot of different types of variation in the uh, either in the written or colloquial form when it is transcribed or written. Okay, now I understand. So in the beginning, you also mentioned uh, that you used crowdsourcing to, right. um, to collect. So, so that's essentially reaching out to the community again and asking, you know, how would you, how would you transcribe this? Exactly. No, no, no. Uh, with respect to the crowdsource, what I have done, so once I had my data and all transcribed and translated and annotated, I found out different types of unusual patterns. Uh, for example, in terms of word order study, because this is another step after definiteness marking that I'm going to uh, programize like uh, syntactic structures in terms of word order. So I found out, okay, there are unusual patterns like uh, sometimes preverbal, postverbal, and some frequencies in between, depending on the type of construction, those unusual patterns um, I selected and then I prepared a kind of paragraph or picture story and then I left out some spaces which were important for those unusual patterns and I asked the informants either to fill out the gaps for me based on the features and the forms and elements that I give um, so that they can put it in. And then those sentences that were produced by these speakers, I uh, basically tested again another group of uh, speakers so that they can judge about that. For example, if this is a correct sentence or if it is not a correct sentence or if it is a good sentence so that they can tell me about their impression and the way that they are basically um, uh, viewing their language variety and the Tactic structures. Um, and that was uh, the kind of crowdsourcing experimental analysis that I have done. So basically, it was very explicitly I asked them, do you accept mm -hmm. this? Is it grammatical? Is it not grammatical? If not, what would be your better option? And how would you say that in your own yeah. language variety? So that is another way of collecting the data that I um, tried to analyze. Because the, in terms of processing principles, like what Hawkins and Gibsons are talking about, short before long, long before short, that means when a, an element is short, it comes first. And if an element is longer, it comes later, or vice versa. I wanted also to check the um, uh, basically the predictability of such a kind of principles uh, and this language variety. Right, right. I see that uh, Tanya has a question uh, in the chat. It's interesting to see how powerful something as inherently simple as regular expressions can help to analyze data. 
I was wondering, so yeah, so she was wondering um, if for the definite uh, article detection, you could maybe check the right and left context to help you identify them more reliably. Uh, so by the right and left context, uh, that means uh, the element, right? The element which is hosting the definite indefinite article, or? I, I think so. I think so. Is it, yeah. So well, says, this yes, is what well. actually we did, because this is exactly what we did, because uh, if you use regex and if you don't define that what is coming first and what is coming later, then that would be very hard. So the, the reason that we could really raise, because even for indefiniteness at the first step, it was not really robust uh, and it was not very accurate. So we really tried to see, okay, what do we have as an examples, what the regex found out? And then we tried, okay, do, we said that, okay, we have, um, and for example, the, our noun, as x, and then like the suffix, the prefix, how many suffix and prefixes and how many elements came after our definite or indefinite marker. Based on that, we said, okay, hey, regex, this is a type of element. And if you, ha if you have ek or aka, if there are like one or two more elements afterwards or before, consider this as definite or indefinite uh, so that we can uh, limitize our um, query and to be more precise. Yeah, thanks a lot. I mean, this, uh, this was actually a method that we did. Okay, great, thank you. I see uh, Rahula um, Mofidi has a hand up. Do you want to unmute? Yes. Uh, okay, thanks for your talk. Uh, do you have my voice? Yes, yes, yes I we do. can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask about um, a more general approach uh, in the Iranian uh, languages uh, in this field. Are, are there similar investigations uh, on Persian or not? And have you been considering them? And also, I want to ask about uh, some similar behavior which may be observed uh, with regard to the indefinite marker in um, both uh, Persian and Kurdish. Okay, right. Thanks a lot uh, for the question. Um, so the, the fact is that there are uh, there are works done on Persian more than the other Iranian languages, but um, Kurdish is the only only language variety that has uh, not only one, but of course there are a few other more. But systematically, Kurdish has definite marker. So this is the only language variety that has a, a, a very defined. Um, uh, system of indefinite and indefinite marker, while in the other varieties, like for example, uh, Baluchi, for example, we have um, definite article, definite marker as a suffix in the form of ka, a, a, ka, again. But for those minority languages, nothing has been done. And for Persian, uh, we don't have definite marker. Of course, there is one e suffix which is like um, debatable, and there are people arguing either it is definite or not definite marker. Um, and with respect to indefinite marking, uh, again, uh, with respect to regex, no, no, I didn't see any kind of study in this respect. Of course, there are computational stuff running, but for Corpus analysis. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything. So I wouldn't say that we have, first of all, in terms of um, NLP and machine learning, for example, um, stuff, nothing on Iranian languages in this respect. And for Persian, mostly uh, the, the word, like uh, the, the stuff which are done are on the tree bank level or for speech uh, processing, and uh, they are not really down and deep into these type of morphological analysis so that we can have such a kind of um, frequency analysis and to see uh, to detect patterns in a corpora. I hope that answers your question. I don't hear anything. Um, does anybody else have a question? I don't see anything in the chat. You can also just unmute if you want. Okay, I I actually have one more question. I mean, I've got, I've yep. got more questions, but I have one more question. I, I'm also looking at the time because you said that you needed to leave uh, sure. a little bit early. Uh, I was actually wondering um, during your presentation, but now I, I see your results. So wouldn't you, so this looks actually looks like a very difficult task to me. 
uh, wouldn't you need like a full morphological analysis to really properly identify um, the the determiners, but also other properties of the uh, of the words? So, so how is it that you can still e extract this? Um, so, so if you would ask me to do it, because I don't know the language, I would probably not be able to do this unless I had a full morphological analysis that would actually exactly. tell me the answer. Yeah, this is totally uh, correct. And actually, this is the case, because uh, as we see that these, um, as I said, this is a minority language and lower source language. And we don't have that much information about it. We don't have that much corpora about it so that we can train the data. On the other side, we do not have that much annotated data also. So we have lack of everything. And if um, I ask, for example, a student or a professor or a researcher somewhere that they are working on, for example, computational linguistics, without giving the fully annotated data, it is really somehow in, not impossible, but it is super complicated and hard. Because as, as I pointed out, even for me, that I'm fully aware of the whole phenomenon, what is happening, as you see here in our analysis, still we get this type of uh, cases that even I overlooked. And I could find those cases like with the help of the machine. Um, and for that, we need really fully annotated. But then the question is that who is going to annotate them? Because mm -hmm. not anyone is trained and not anyone is fully aware of the structure because these are local varieties that you really need to uh, understand it well and you really need to be familiar with so that you can really precisely annotate it. This is a difficult thing. Another thing of the difficulty is that this language is in contact with many other more languages and also it is in a transition zone. So basically transition zone from uh, different types of varieties to each other. So again, uh, this would be very complicated and hard to say, okay, if it is originally an original form or if it is a contact phenomenon or if it is like, a, mm, I don't know, any other feature from any other language variety. So all of these come together even in the annotation. Even if you have the fully annotated, still you need to check and control it with two, three more people to make sure that everything is correct and fine yeah yeah no i fully understand so I, I i didn't mean to imply that it was easy to do the morphological analysis um but just to be able to properly extract the you right. know the, the 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 real information that's in there um no thank you so that answers my question um Please. does anybody else have a last question perhaps i don't see Anything in the chat? I don't see any hands. So if not, then I would really like to thank you, uh, Eva. I really uh, enjoyed the presentation. Uh, it was nice to have um, a, a focus on, a, on linguistic aspects um, and then kind of combined with some computational analyses uh, showing the difficulties, I think, when working with low resource languages. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mino, for giving the chance to talk about that and to raise the questions. And also, yeah, I'm, I mean, feel free to contact me if there is anything else or any question, I would be happy. And if you have any suggestion for improving, I would be very, very happy to hear and to work on that. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for this um, nice DH colloquium. I'll stop the recording now. <laughs>